Jubril, it's good to have you on the show this morning. Good morning, person. Thank you for having me. Thank you, William. It's good to have you here. The, the cat is out of bag as expected. Everyone, uh, nearly everyone on the street expects uh, Donald Trump to keep to his words uh, when he became president as going to tear up the Obama's Iran nuclear deal. Now he has virtually turned it into shreds and says he's, he's, he's going to draft another one, which we expect to come on stream in the next couple of days. Uh, we seen the oil market overnight, and perhaps you didn't miss the Bakindo interview on CNN late yesterday. What's your take on this? Oh, well, um, it is the move by the U.S. government has been expected for quite a while now, and we've, we've actually seen uh, a lot of traders pricing down into uh, pricing back into the uh, into the market. So crude oil has been on a uh, on an upward trend for some time now, and that's the reason why you even you even notice in the market the response to the, the market response to the U.S. withdrawal has been a little bit moderated by the fact that uh, most believe that the, this current price uh, are already adjusted for such, uh, uh, for such uh, withdrawal. And, and, and more so, it's because uh, uh, the move is also mired in a lot of uncertainty, largely due to the fact that the EU still wants to remain in the deal. If you look at the major buyers of crude oil from uh, Iran in uh, and over the past uh, two years since the uh, sanctions were lifted, you'll find out that aside from the countries from Asia, which include China, India, and Korea, uh, the other major uh, non-Asia uh, buyer of, of Iranian crude is the EU. And since the EU still remain committed to the deal, the, over, uh, seven, uh, the about 700,000 barrels that has been, that has been exported to the EU will most likely remain in place. However, however, the fact that we still don't know the extent that the U.S. will go in terms of companies that are probably based in the EU and operate out of the U.S., how the, way, uh, how the sanctions are going to affect them, this is in terms of bankers and traders who facilitate trades between, EU and, uh, between the EU and Iran. That, that has brought a lot of uncertainty to the market, and that's the reason why we've seen, uh, we've seen the uh, that crude oil price uh, has not really rallied significantly. We've seen positive movement, but the rally has really been in, uh, uh, moderated. Uh, overnight, well, until this morning, what have you been hearing? You are uh, you're doing energy research with EcoBank Niger. What have you been hearing from the marketplace, uh, from your colleagues this morning about this particular uh, President Trump's decision and how we move from here? Well, right, right now, is that the, GC, the, the important thing is that the response from the Iranian government was quite uh, subtle, so there wasn't any escalation from the Iranian side of things. Uh, on, uh, about the, and the fact that the EU have, actually, have also jointly issued a statement that has significantly opposed the United States move, it gives more credence to Iran in, uh, in this, which means that the possibility of the United States trying to force down any new deal uh, any new deal in the, in the short to medium time is quite unlikely. There will be some proposal, there will be some uh, form of uh, diplomacy between the two, but it will be very hard to see Iran make for that concession, which is what the U.S. wants in terms of its uh, nuclear plan. Now, if you look at the oil market, I'm not sure if you, and I asked that earlier, my first question, whether you missed the Bakindo's uh, CNN exclusive last night, uh, uh, late in the night yesterday, a very quick one about how OPEC plus one would react or should react to President Trump's reaction, which definitely wasn't okay, really so unexpected. For, for OPEC, for, for OPEC in, 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 in any case, this actually, this actually, uh, uh, for the help, OPEC, OPEC has been trying to keep crude oil price high for a while now, and the fact that this move will most likely result in higher crude is actually in favor of OPEC. But unfortunately, Iran is also a member of uh, a, a member of OPEC. But to, it is a significant uh, change in OPEC's uh, policy or direction in the short term. This is due to the fact that, and I still repeat, the fact that. The effect, the full effect of what the sanctions we have on Iran is highly, is very, very unclear right now. Because as against what was, what was in place 2012, when the uh, the sanctions were imposed at UN level, which means most, all the European countries stopped total importation from Iran, that is not the case here. 
All right. So until we have a more until there is uh, a more clear environment as to how the how the sanction we affect import to the EU as well as countries that the US have leverage on in Southeast Asia, it is highly unlikely that uh, OPEC will, re will, react, will react by uh, by shifting their home production level anytime soon. Uh, but, but again, you find uh, the consumption of imports, the imports of oil by the U.S. most likely dropping by some news about 1.2, about 1.1.5 million barrels per day. So the appetite for uh, for imported uh, oil will be much lower in the U.S. The Europeans are the epicenter of the of this crisis as well because they have a very low, very strong relationship with Iran, as it were. But you're looking at Iran uh, being part of uh, the of the discussion to uh, to cap production, whatever, by member states with OPEC plus one, which is still in force, which we expect to be to the end of uh, 2018. But remember, Iran has been a little bit at odds with Saudi Arabia in terms of where oil prices should go. Saudi Arabia wants uh, yes, Iran, 80. Iran doesn't want that. Okay, so Iran, Iran has been, yes, has been a proponent of keeping crude oil price at about 60 to 70 dollar. Uh, why Saudi Arabia prefer crude oil to be around 80 dollar? Around 80 dollars. Um, unfortunately, this move will actually increase crude oil price. And the U.S. government, if you notice, uh, about a month ago, the United States president was uh, somehow making some complaint about the fact that he believed that the move by uh, the move by OPEC and Russia is keeping crude oil price artificially high. Unfortunately, what the move that he has made right uh, that he has made right now in terms of pulling out of the JCPOA has further uh, bolstered the position of higher crude oil price. So Iran does not really have any leverage to actually bring crude oil price down right now because regardless of uh, uh, while Iran might have potential of increasing production, getting that production to the market based on the fact that sanctions are now being imposed will be much more difficult, which means this, give, this push the leverage to the side of the OPEC members in terms of Saudi, uh, to the OPEC members that want higher prices in terms of Saudi Arabia and Russia. And right, right now, that's, that will most likely be the direction that crude oil price will go. We're most likely going to see higher crude oil prices, albeit on a moderated level. Okay, uh, let, let's bring it all home. Let's bring it all home. Thank you very much. Let's, let's put it all in the basket and put it here uh, in Nigeria, where uh, Exotic Capital this morning says all exporters, exporting countries far away from the epicenter of what is going on, uh, Colombia, Kazakhstan, Nigeria, should benefit from the higher oil prices for longer. But the flip side of that for Nigeria is that we're both an exporter and a very heavy consuming importer. But on the net, on the net, uh, while that is true, on a net basis, higher crude oil price actually benefits Nigeria more than the downside from uh, imports of petroleum products. So the, the benefits that are accrued to Nigeria if crude oil price increase based on our current production level is way more than what uh, the amount of uh, uh, increase in, say, subsidy or price of petroleum products that will incur from, uh, from buying refined products. So... Uh, in terms of well, the report you, you mentioned, it is true that for crude oil exporters, crude oil exporters, especially those who are not constrained in terms of uh, production, like Kazakhstan, like Nigeria, in the meantime, will most likely be the major benef uh, uh, the beneficiary of this move because the higher crude oil price and the, the fact that these countries may actually increase production in the short term to plug any shortfall of supply from Iran means they, they, can actually, uh, they can actually benefit significantly, and that's where Nigeria comes in. But you should also remember that any, uh, significant, any major increase in, Nigerian in Nigeria's production right now will most likely be frowned upon by OPEC. So Nigeria is actually between a rock and a hard place now in terms of our, uh, our production level. And again, it's not, it's not exactly like Nigeria have the ability to overnight increase production. We are not going to see any form of that until later in the year when we see projects come on board. Well, well with this kind of geopolitical noise all over the place, summer rattling, whatever it is, uh, so how do you think our oil diplomacy should... How do you think we should think about it? Uh, U.S. is going on its own. Iran is there. The Middle East is there. The Europeans are there. Then you go to Asia. So, how, how do you think we should work out our next move when it comes to this very hot water 
uh, across uh, the world when, where we speak right now between Iran, then you have the North Korea at the extreme end. Well, well, given the fact that Nigeria actually wield no so much uh, significant power in terms of global diplomacy when it comes to whether it will be it uh, nuclear or in terms of the aggregate level of crude oil production, the best we can do is to take the benefit that is accruing to us right now. We suffered a lot from decline in prices when, the, when sanctions were lifted in 2016, coupled with the fact that global production increased and crude oil price declined to low levels. So this, is, this might be the time to re repatriate, uh, to recover from all those levels. So, but in terms of uh, navigating the diploma, uh, diploma, uh, diplomatic environment right now, I, I, I really find it hard to see any significant uh, influence that Nigeria du can play. Jubriel, uh, Jubriel, you're sounding like Bismarck Rwani. Why do I have selfish people on the program? <laughs> so those with selfish inclinations. This morning on my program, Bismarck Rwani sounded very selfish. He said we should just enjoy the rally, and you are here. Well, 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 that, that, that's exactly that's exactly what we that's exactly what we can do. Okay. We 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 we, we are not in a position to mediate between the U.S. and the and uh, Iran. The U.S. and Iran. No, 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 no. We don't. And uh, the e, uh, we, we don't have that power. The EU that usually be the uh, mediating uh, power is, si is siding with Iran in this. Okay. So, so, so we just kill. We just kill. We kill behind the winning team. Let me take it out of your mind. We just kill behind the winning team, isn't it? Or better still, we just stay in the middle and watch everyone. I like that. Have a great day. Thank you very much. <laughs>